blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please join me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Blend the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you planted in the heart of your servants William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale a consuming passion to bring the scriptures to people in their native tongues and endowed them with the gift of powerful and graceful expression and with strength to persevere against all obstacles. Reveal to us your saving word as we read and study the scriptures and hear them calling to us, calling us to repentance and life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Proverbs, the word of the Lord. Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, lived with prudence, and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me rulers rule, and nobles, all who govern rightly. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Will you turn to page 770? <clears throat> to the lecture from page or from paragraph 89. O Lord, your word Lord is, is everlasting. everlasting. It it firm in your faithfulness remains from one generation to another. You establish the earth and your lives. By your decree these continue to today. For all things are your service. If my delight had not been in your law, I, I should perish in my affliction. I will never forget your commandments. Because, because I am them, them you give my life. I am yours. Oh, that you would save me. For I study your commandments. Though the wicked lie in wait for me to destroy me, I will apply my mind to your decrees. I see that all things come to an end. But your hand has no bounds. <clears throat> Paul speaks to the wavering believers of Corinth. <laughs> now I would remind you, brother, 
brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we, we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> then Jesus cried aloud, whoever believes in me, who, whoever believes in me, not in me, but in him who sent him. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word as a judge, on the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as judge, for I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life, for what I speak, therefore I speak just as the Father has told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I can see everybody. <laughs> now, now I don't want to trip on that. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> we celebrate not one but two saints today, as you have already heard in the uh, in the collect. And I should re read a little bit about them as they're always in the saints' books. Uh, Tyndall was born about 1495 near the Welsh borders. These are <clears throat> second half 
and that was second half or the, near the end of the 15th century. Um, Coverdale was uh, born a little earlier <laughs> in Yorkshire. So they both were born at times, in a time that became uh, full of religious change and challenge and uh, difficulties for them, certainly. Uh, but excitement in the world in that people were about to receive more possibilities to hear and to read, uh, anyone who could read, um, the, the scriptures in English. Uh, Tyndall was uh, studied at both Oxford and Cambridge and was ordained in 1521 and then was a domestic chaplain, I assume that means in a household, and a tutor in Gloucestershire and London. And Coverdale uh, studied at Cambridge, was ordained in 1514, and then uh, joined the Anglican, excuse me, Augustinian friars. <clears throat> but each of these men had a facility in translation that convinced both of them, and there's no indication in any small thing I read that they knew one another. They must have known of one another for sure. Um, they had a burning desire to translate the scriptures uh, into English so that they would be more available. Now, see, this morning, you heard little snippets of scripture, right? And that happens on Sundays too. The good news about that is it travels through the scriptures, the chosen uh, pericopes that we hear at times of worship, so that we get a sense of the whole of things. But in fact, it's not like sitting down at home with your Bible and either because you've been stirred by a pericope that you heard or because there's just something you want to know uh, and you feel drawn to a gospel or an epistle or an Old Testament book, um, <clears throat> then you read on your own and you can go on reading and you don't have to have this uh, truncated sense of receiving the message of the good news of Jesus the Christ. So these men were really bound to become translators. This was their passion. And um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> but they ended up having very different lives. Tyndall uh, did basically 80% of the whole Bible. Um, in Old Testament as well as New, though they both started with the New Testament. Um, but he wasn't so clever about being fast on his feet and um, had a short life and was uh, strangled and burned in Brussels in 1536. Coverdale, on the other hand, who was doing the same work of translation was more aware of the changing scenes politically in England and appeared to, <laughs> if he had his own little <clears throat> boat or was forever getting passage on boats that went between England and the continent, the Reformation was, it was also a fiery deal on the continent, but there, were, there was more flexibility, there were more places where a translator would not be strangled and burned. <clears throat> so he traveled a great deal. And for the purpose of celebrating these saints, I looked up the number of translations of the Bible easily available to us on Bible Gateway, a website. And uh, <clears throat> the total was 21 different translations. A few of them were New Testament only, but 21 
different translations. That would include something like Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, Anglicized. They, you know, I mean, not all of them are real different, but 21 openly presented uh, translations in our language of Holy Scripture. And I could take from any one of them, put that in a bulletin, and read it on a Sunday or have the lecture read it on a Sunday, and I would not be strangled and burned. <laughs> now I might get some, I might get some friendly and not so friendly uh, feedback from individuals about straying from what is really the new revised standard version. Is this is in fact the standard uh, used in the Episcopal Church widely today, but <clears throat> there's no problem, right? It was not that way. <laughs> it was not that way uh, in the days of Tyndall and Coverdale. In the 16th century, as the absolute power in the West of the Roman Church diminished, and the Reformation began to be a serious new vision and possibility on the continent, there remained the combined power of the state with the church everywhere, whether it be the town council of Antwerp or Henry VIII in England. And it so, <clears throat> it meant that King Henry VIII, the one of wife taking and wife leaving, was the head of the church in England, as well as the head of the government. And he was a follower of really um, he, the Catholic Church. He never really intended to leave it in the, sen in the sense that Jesus never intended to leave Judaism. But the strength of the reality of this new world with the resurrected Christ uh, is the most important factor in all of this. And uh, so though, though he uh, acknowledged all that, he preferred the Roman Catholic practices and liturgies. And so he was not real keen on having translations in English of the Bible because of the power, this is good news, because of the power of God's word. But he felt that was better reserved for him and his chaplains, I think. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> our translators, however, believed, as did Luther in Germany, who sort of began all this, that the Bible should be available to lay persons in the vernacular. And they both worked on translating the Bible into the English used at the time. And I, as I said earlier, the first to die uh, for this affront to the king's power was Tyndale. And I don't know if all of you have either read Wolf Hall or seen it on public TV, the story of Thomas Cromwell. Um, and there, there, there is more than one passage in that book and in the second of the series in which uh, he, who traveled back and forth to the continent and had many contacts there, would uh, realize that in a trunk, in a locked trunk in his household, there was, uh, I think it was Tyndale's translation. And he knew that if any authorities ever found that, yeah, his life was over, as certainly as a member of the court and advisor to the king. So these were very uh, flammable, <laughs> I should say, um, scriptures and, and incredibly important to the way the world would go. And though Tyndale may have been killed in Brussels, he was killed by a friend of Henry VIII. So not only was the king's power absolute, the king had a very long arm of power and friends 
of course, in other places. And Coverdale was perhaps, I wonder, you know, more politically astute, uh, better friends who have hustled him out of the country. I really don't know the details, but he went back and forth, depending on who wore the crown. <clears throat> so he was either, and this is quite amazing, really, he was either living in England as a pastor in the Church of England, or he was on the continent serving as a Lutheran pastor. So he managed his life on both these scenes. And, uh, and so it went until the reign of Henry was over, Edward was over, and Mary was over. Once Elizabeth I ascended to the throne and <clears throat> something called the Elizabethan settlement came to be, which I won't really get into, but it meant that the nose of the authorities no longer was interested in knowing exactly which translation, if any, you ever saw or was interested in. If you came to church um, and were part of your parish uh, and part of the Church of England, that was enough for her. Uh, <clears throat> what does this have to do with us, with our 21 translations? so easily available. I think as you heard uh, Joe read this morning, as you heard uh, Paul speak, you get a sense of the drivenness of the apostles and disciples and translators in every age who have been so changed so fired into something new, like putting something into the kiln and having a new creation come out by what they read in the scripture, that they were transformed. And because they were transformed, they had to tell someone. And uh, <clears throat> we are far closer to the lukewarm church written to by John, uh, <clears throat> then one of these conflagration points in the history of the church. It's okay, that's where we are on earth. But I would say that the word still has the power to transform each and every one of us at some time, in some way. And when that happens, you have the need to say something about it. And uh, I'm as guilty as anyone here in not doing that. Uh, and uh, so I would say we need to rise up as Tyndale and Coverdale did with their particular talent. Our particular talents are different. But we have friends who really know very little or nothing of the gospel. We have children <laughs> who either join us in this or we've given up on them and we know Jesus will find them <laughs> sometime. And we have grandchildren uh, to educate in the faith. So even in these smaller circles, that same flame of belief and that same uh, confirmation of what should be said resides in each of us. And we don't have to be a skilled translator in order to communicate it, I would say. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> <clears throat> You can take this back, okay? <laughs>
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light shine upon them. We pray you for your saints who have entered into joy. And may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, Give you an eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ you. loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere. We give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we pr praise you putting, <clears throat> excuse me, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God on power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the Holy and gracious Father, in, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercies, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He's on, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is dying, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully serve, receive this sacrament and serve you in, uh, in, on, in honesty, unity, <laughs> and uh, peace. <laughs> and at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, listen to the Jesus. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. I was praying. Eternal God, and Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through the Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.
be with me now and always. Amen. We have been fed and the world is waiting for us. Therefore, let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.